Let's talk about the difference between rich dad, poor dad, and Dave Ramsey's seven baby steps. What's up, guys? Welcome to Lion Share Bookkeeping, Landlord CFO. My name is Benjamin Day, and we help real estate investors with all of the money related things. Since 2017, we've been doing the bookkeeping. Uh, now we're helping out with the CFO services, and we love all of our CPA connections that make the money side of real estate easy for our clients. And today, I want to uh, just rant about kind of the biggest, uh, like the biggest, like dichotomy of financial perspectives that exists, I think right now in popular opinion. And that is the difference between uh, the Robert Kiyosaki, rich dad, poor dad approach to good debt versus the Dave Ramsey, seven baby steps approach to uh, cash is king and absolutely no debt, cut up your credit cards. What is the difference and what is the point and what should you be doing as an investor? Uh, fundamentally, like both of these have really strong merits. Both of these ideas have really strong merits in your business, in your personal life. They're both worth considering and honestly, it's worth borrowing a little bit from both sides here. So let's talk about it. First to begin, uh, if you're not familiar with these two icons and I'm in no way am I being endorsed by them, uh, TBH really not even sure if I'm allowed to be talking about them, but we'll figure that out in later. Um, so what like the general idea behind these guys is that, um, first that rich dad, poor dad, Robert Kiyosaki, the whole rich dad program, the cash flow quadrant, all the real estate stuff had, has this kind of this radical idea where he redefines what assets mean. I mean, he says that assets aren't just things that have value on your balance sheet, but assets are things that put money in your pocket. And a liability is something that takes money out of your pocket. So even though a car might be worth something, uh, might have value, if you're making a car payment on that car, it's taking money out of your pocket. So the whole car is a liability. Uh, if you own a house, that house has value. But if you're making a house payment, that house is a liability. Unless you can figure out a way to cash flow those assets, unless you can figure out a way to make your house cash flow, your car cash flow, in which case it'll be an asset to accountants and it would be an asset according to Rich Dad Poor Dad. And so this really kind of culminates in the Rich Dad strategy where they say, take on good debt. If you can take out debt on a house, but then that house pays for the debt and then some, that's good debt. That debt is paying for itself and providing you a return. And that's really what we like to do. And what you can do in that case is you don't have to have a hundred thousand dollars, a quarter million dollars, a million dollars to go buy that property. You can have 10, 20, 30% of that purchase price and use the rest in debt. But if it pays for itself, it's fine because it's paying for itself. So there's no need to worry. There's this whole laundry list of how awesome that is, right? And then there's the other side. And there's the side of Dave Ramsey and the seven baby steps where uh, Dave Ramsey says that, you know, debt is a slippery slope that before you know it, you're really one bad day away from maxing out your credit cards, being in a hole that you can't dig yourself out of. You're not prepared. Uh, you're not in control of your spending. You're not in control of your personal finance. You're using debt as a crutch. And that crutch is what's going to keep you from retiring and keep you um, in poverty and miserable forever. And I'm just so we're clear, I don't sponsor or really subscribe to either of these people very well. Um, these are just kind of the, the highlights and the general vibe, right? Um, but generally speaking, then what uh, Dave Ramsey you'll say is, Hey, follow these seven baby steps to put yourself on the right trajectory financially. Um, starts with saving a little bit of money. Then you do the debt snowball, pay off all of your credit card debt, all of your normal debts, and ultimately ends with being totally financially free, having a house that's paid for uh, college is paid for. You've invested a whole bunch of money. You don't have any debt. Uh, you're a slave to no one. You're the master of your own fate and everything is awesome. You have so much cash. Um, because you're not using debt, right? And, and so cash is king in this space. Here's what I want to begin to go through. Uh, number one on our list in this kind of like rich dad versus uh, baby steps debate. Uh, number one is that having a whole lot of cash and absolutely no leverage means that you're getting a low return. That's just the truth. Um, if I go out today and I buy a business for, you know, if I go put $25,000 down on something and it pays me, 
you know, $2,500 a month, right? So it's going to pay me whatever that is, uh, a significant amount of money. It's going to pay me a hundred percent of my investment back and then another five grand on top of it. So $30,000 on my 25, that's awesome. Like that is a super cool investment. You likely won't see that anywhere uh, unless it's a business that you've purchased, right? But you're going to need cash to go buy that, that deal. That is a crazy investment. What is more likely is that you're going to go buy a house that's worth, you know, you're going to go buy a house all cash for uh, a quarter million dollars. It's going to pay out maybe $2,500 a month. Um, so by the end of the year, you're really looking at that same. So that's 25 grand. That's, you know, that's still 30 grand that it might be generating for you on a $250,000 investment. So now you're kind of looking more like 10%, right? Before expenses, that's just the income it generates before fixing it up, before property taxes, before insurance, before utilities and vacancy, right? Now, suddenly you're what was originally a, you know, a hundred percent plus return is now more like a 10 ish percent return before expenses, which could easily half that. And what we run into in this is this idea that not using any leverage at all could put you in a bad spot. Uh, it could put you in a very slow going place where instead of being able to generate that 30 grand that then you can pay expenses with, you have to first save that quarter million dollars in cash. And that kind of cash, unless you have a great job, is just hard to come by. Uh, and what you could do instead is instead of having that, you know, 25,000 or 250 grand is you could have $25,000 in cash and 25 grand in, you know, a debt instrument or borrow money from a partner and begin to leverage debt in a smart way to where you could absolutely have $25,000 into a deal and be making $2,500 a month on your rents as a business. And then you got to go manage your expenses, but you're still generating so much more money per month compared to the amount of cash you actually have in it. And so like having a big cash definitely is helpful. Being, being all cash and low debt is helpful in a lot of respects. The flip side of that coin though, is that you're absolutely beginning to reduce your leverage, which means that you're also effectively reducing your return per dollar right? Uh, if I had a $250,000 in cash, I could go buy five $250,000 rental properties that all generate that same number and scale if I were willing to take on the debt. So avoiding debt isn't always the best plan when you know that you can go and get good debt. Number two in our scenario though, kind of cuts the other way. And in this scenario, we're not, we don't carry any cash at all. We're all debt all the way, all good debt, right? So I want you to imagine for a second that this same $250,000 property, let's say you found a money partner that was willing to put the whole down payment on. You found the deal. They're willing to put all the money in. You've got zero money in this deal at all, which is great because you're broke. You don't have any money at all. You need some cash flow. And so this person's going to go 50, 50 on this deal with you. They brought all the money. You found the deal. You think that's fair. You split it. You're off to the races. Um, what you're dealing with there then is an incredibly high return for you personally. If all you had to do was pay for a steak dinner to convince this person to invest with you, you're making, you know, however much money a month based off of your $50 or a hundred dollar, $200 steak dinner investment. So your return could be huge. And if anything goes wrong with that deal, your return could disappear uh, because fundamentally, when you don't have cash, you're not ready for bad days. Uh, you're counting on your relationships, your gumption, your go, your get her done in order to save yourself from a, from when things go wrong and things go wrong all the time. And this is really to the baby steps credit is that you don't want to be leveraged to the teeth because when you've got that kind of leverage, the tax collect, the bill collector doesn't care that you had a bad day. Like you, they don't care that you're down on your luck right now. They still want to get paid and they're going to make your life miserable trying to get their money from you. So we really can't just leverage how much more convenient would it be in this situation? If you found the property and you found a money partner to go 50, 50, and you had 25, $50,000 cash in the bank, Anyway, you could have bought that deal yourself, but instead you went and found a money partner that was willing to bring all of the cash, but you've got cash in reserves just in case. What if in addition to that, all the rent money that you were bringing in, you were automatically saving it 
uh, in a reserve account so that when things did go wrong, you've got those cash reserves ready to go. And you did not squeeze every dollar out of your rents to go and do the next deal and the next deal and the next deal. And you're just leveraged all the way up waiting for one thing to go wrong. That'll cause your whole portfolio to fall apart. There's a, there's a neat ratio that you should look up for this. It's called the current ratio. Uh, and this is like big, big nerdy financial energy, but effectively we like to use the current ratio when working with our investors. We're, we love the rich dad mentality and we love the baby steps mentality, but we like to blend these together as much as we can. So we use a lot of financial ratios to kind of measure our risk. And the easiest way to measure risk in real estate uh, is with your cash balance and your cash flow. Uh, from just like a total numbers and cash perspective and to measure your cash balance, the current ratio is where you'll win. So what I want you to do, uh, your kind of your homework on this, if you will, is to take a look at all of the bills that you'll pay in a year. Um, on average, if you think you're going to pay maybe some utility bills, but not a whole lot, you're going to have a little bit of vacancy, but not really. You've got some insurance, you've got property taxes, you've got your monthly mortgage payments. Go ahead and add those up for a year. Come up with a nice number on that. So let's say that over the course of a year, you're going to spend something like $30,000, uh, probably as an estimate on your bills. Like, you know, that's coming up in the next year between all these things that I mentioned. What we would recommend to you is that you have at least $30,000 cash in the bank for that short term debt. The stuff that you know that you're going to pay probably inside of a year, we would recommend that you would carry at least 30 grand in your business. Honestly, the better ratio here, the better ratio to cash is more like $40,000 for every 30,000 or what you're really looking for right here is a 1.2 ratio. So if you have a hundred thousand dollars in debt that you're a hundred thousand dollars in expenses that you're going to end up paying in the next year you should have like $120,000 in cash. And what this does is it lets you know, hey, I've got enough cash in the bank to pay everything that I know is coming and I'll have a little bit of cash left over for the surprises. And what that means then, once you reach that cash level, any excess cash that your business is generating at that point, you can begin to pull it out and go do fun things with it. And that's really what we like to see here is we like to see those options. Now, saving, you know, 40 grand for $30,000 a year worth of debt coverage and insurance and maintenance and utilities and taxes sounds like a lot. And you'd rather go put that 40 grand to work. That's fine. What we would encourage you to do is take a bigger and better look at your financial tools. Think about getting some sort of CFO or, uh, you know, somebody who's really real estate savvy, take a look at your portfolio and figure out if you couldn't find that $40,000 somewhere else in your portfolio, like in a portfolio line of credit or in business credit or something that could help you float the gap. If you needed to get a little bit aggressive with your cash balance in the meantime, um, ultimately, and really number three in this list is figuring out the balance to manage your risk. Uh, it is impossible for me to stand here on this video and say, Hey, you should not take any debt out at all. Because as we've discussed, like having debt in real estate is kind of a smart move. If your numbers work and your numbers have to work, the deal has to cash flow, and Having a huge cash reserve in your business is also a good plan, especially with the way quarantine has worked with uh, like the coronavirus and COVID-19. That cash balance, that cash reserve saved a bunch of real estate businesses in 2020, and it will continue to save real estate businesses in the future. There's tons of different ways that you can leverage a cash balance that we've talked about in previous videos, how you can really put that to your advantage, not just as a, like a nice little like uh, security blanket, but as a real effective tool in your business to acquire more financing and to attract other financial partners. But like you can't, not do both is really our answer. Uh, but the level that you do to either one really depends on your strategy. We got to look at your risk. We got to look at your, your entry and your exit. How long are you going to be into this? What are your plans? What are your goals? And that kind of information would help anybody, whether it's a CFO or a bookkeeper or you or your banker, anybody that's on your financial team, having those goals together and understanding your risk and your, your perspective and your plans, that is really what is going to help you decide how heavy into the rich debt, poor debt, and good debt you need to be versus how heavy you need to be in all cash and cut up your credit cards. So I really strongly recommend that you get connected with somebody who can understand your financial situation, and help you put together a plan that fits best in your business. Let me know in the comment section below how you feel about rich dad, poor dad, about the seven baby steps, about investing, about carrying cash and good debt or not in your business. I'm 
always happy to have this conversation. And I really want to know what you think. What are you doing? What do you know that's worked? How have you been burned before? Uh, let's talk about it. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe, comment down below, and we will see you in the next video.